<clears throat> Hi everyone, and welcome to video update for a physics vehicle version 2.1. Uh, Alright, so the first thing I'm going to show you that I changed is, well first of all you can see the player mesh in there with uh, the steering animation. But uh, what I really wanted to show you was the debug widget. So you can see uh, still display the FPS and the FPS right now are lower than they should be. But anyway, uh, they're green as long as they're above 60 FPS and they turn red if you go un underneath 60. And then the general speed is basically the speed the vehicle is moving uh, any direction confused <clears throat> and forward speed is going to be only the forward speed so for example if the car is drifting to the sides uh, you're going to see the forward speed is going to be smaller than the general speed then you still have the show collision and auto rotate camera then you have a, an unroll button here which is basically going to add roll input to the left for as long as you hold it. So uh, if you actually manage to get the car to roll on the side or onto its top, you can use the unroll button to put it back on its wheel. <clears throat> now I say if you manage to, because I've also added some functions to help with the, the vehicles rolling too easily. So, oh, oh, there I go. All right, oh, shoot. Got back on this wheel on its own. But yeah, you can use the unroll to uh, put the vehicle back on its wheels. Now the next thing I did was a, uh, these two buttons, so save current transform and teleport to saved transform. Alright, I guess I did something in the meantime and it got broken, but... Oh no, okay, it works. I guess I was just being too close. So yeah, you can just save any transform you want and uh, if you fall out of the map then you can hit that button to uh, teleport the vehicle back into this transform. And then there's these two buttons that show you my YouTube channel and the forum page for the project. So, all right, that's enough of the, the widget. Uh, all right, so onto the first person character, you can see one hand on the shift stick and just super relaxed one hand on the steering wheel which is totally not suitable for a uh, racing game, but looks pretty cool. And so, yeah. Now you should be able to open up the animation blueprints for both the vehicle and the player and have a pretty good idea of how I approached the, the animation so that you can reprodu reproduce it. Then, okay, so that was just a little, little tweaks I did. Most of the work I've done for this update is this right here. So additional gravity is still there to make the falling more uh, realistic. And then what I did was I checked for every wheel with a light trace if the wheel is resting on the ground or if it's in the air 
And then if it's touching the ground, I apply a fraction of the anti-drift multiplier. So anti-drift is going to be either, well, in between 0 and 1. And at 1, it won't drift at all anymore. And at 0, you're going to have the, uh, you know, the, the default drifting without any assistance from this system. And so basically what that does is just getting the side velocity and multiplying it by values to make it smaller. So that helps you tweak how much drifting you're going to get. And then same for the anti-roll. It basically just adds uh, reversed rolling so that uh, the vehicle shouldn't roll onto its roof so easily anymore. And the reason this is all for each wheels individually is that, for example, if you have eight wheels, then each wheels is gonna control one eighth of the, the multiplier. So if only four wheels are touching the ground, then you're gonna get only half of that multiplier applied. And if it's not touching the ground at all, then it's not going to affect the uh, sideway velocity of the vehicle. And same for the anti-rolling here. So these are just basically cheats to make the vehicle more stable. So if you crank these up to the max, both the anti-drift uh, anti and anti-roll, you're going to get a vehicle that is super easy to control, uh, no drifting, no rolling over. And it's going to be like super unrealistic, but super easy to control. <laughs> then the next big thing I did was to, uh, to, to change the acceleration method. So set steering input. Uh, what am I doing? Set throttle input. Now you can see this, this bit of code got quite a lot bigger. So same as always for each wheels that has torques. Uh, I add angular velocity using the RPM, the RPM converted into degrees per second instead of rotation per minute. And then divided by the gear ratio of the current gear and divided again by the differential rate ratio. So this is going to set how fast the wheel actually spins. And then for the torque, I still have my torque curve. And then multiply that torque curve by the gear ratio. So basically the gear ratio is going to uh, make, the, 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 make the torque smaller when the rotation speed is bigger. And the opposite as well. So for example, the first gear, which is, see the first gear has a gear ratio of 2.85. So the torque is going to be 2.85 times bigger, while the rotation speed is going to be 2.5, 2.85 times smaller than the RPM. So that's how I control the, the acceleration of each gear, basically. Instead of simply adding torque, which uh, was causing trouble and uh, prevented burnouts and etc. So now using this, you can have aura spin when you're drifting and do burnouts and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's a lot more uh, satisfying. Then what else did I... Okay, yeah, of course I did the uh, possess vehicle so that you can get in the vehicle from the third person pawn, which I included in here. Let me just demonstrate that real quick. 
Right, so you're in the pawn, you can see that there is no driver mesh in the car. And then you just press F, and then your player disappears, and the player mesh is in the car. So I did that. Uh, what else did I do? What else? What else? Oh yeah, I have also set the handbrake to be toggled on when the car isn't being possessed by a player. <laughs> And I think this is pretty much it. So uh, better control over the car drifting and rolling, uh, better method of uh, accelerating the wheels for more realistic results. And uh, this is it. So yeah, it's actually, uh, it drives really, really differently from what it did before. For example, if I try to do a burnout, all right, now you can see the rear wheels are totally spinning faster than the front wheels. And then if I release the brakes, you can see I'm doing donuts. And if I release the steering, you can see, oh, it starts drifting to a side and I can kind of control the drift like that. Now, of course, uh, you can adjust the uh, drift, anti-drift multiplier so that you get more control over the direction of the drift and etc. But yeah, overall, more realistic traction and all that. And pretty sweet first person view as well. <laughs> yeah, that's actually been requested for a long time that I uh, do some player animation for the car, and so now it's done. Uh, by the way, thanks a lot to Alexander, a good friend of mine that did the animation for the character. And so as always, you can adjust the uh, suspension. So for example, if I set the sus bed, uh, suspension super long and super soft, I get a lot more tilting and uh, rolling as well. So you can really tweak the suspension at runtime. Oh, there I go. I managed to roll it on its side. So now I can show you the unroll. You just hold it until it's uh, back in its wheels. <laughs> yeah, I need to fix the uh, teleport to transform. It got broken somehow. <laughs> so, all right. As always, suggestions are very welcome. And uh, the download for that is going to be available on the forum. I'll post the link in the description again. And that was it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.